and David, you can be the star of the show. Okay, um, I've got a question in terms of the super, and remember, I know you said mine was difficult. Yeah. Um, is there any is there any possibility of withdrawing any super at sixty five or digital city? Sorry, you broke up a little bit. Is there any possibility of withdrawing Super to crypto or? What was the second part of the question? Super? Yeah. Yeah, so it's a super question. How are you able to withdraw in your super funds at 55? Sorry, mate. It's, it's very muffled and I can't see your face anymore. I'm not sure what's happened. Sorry, Jeremy. Yep. You're saying you can't access your super till you're 65? 65 it is. Okay. Or 65, 67, whatever they do. They, they change the rules sometimes. So um, do, you, do you have a self-managed super fund? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, no, I think, yeah, they bumped it up, didn't they, 67, yeah. 68. Yeah, yeah. So if, you, if you've got a self-managed super fund, you can actually direct the fund to invest into cryptocurrency. Yep. Um, and you can start a self-managed super fund. You can go and talk to your accountant about it, even, even though, you know, you may be an employee and work is paying into your super um, it's like, you know, work might pay you into, say, the Commonwealth Bank, for example. But once the money goes into the Commonwealth Bank, you can take it out of the Commonwealth Bank and you can put it into ANZ. So work might pay into your XYZ super, but once the money's in there, you can take, you know, ten, twenty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 out of that super and put it into another super of your choosing. So you can definitely do that. Uh, as to whether it's worth your while or not depends on which the balance, which we won't tell everybody on the call. That's and all the other question. On YouTube. Um, yeah, for sure. I, no, I'm I, just looking for yeah. some sort of general clarification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I generally say to people like, as as a you know, just pluck a figure out of the air. It's it's worthwhile having a self managed super fund if you've got more than a hundred thousand. Um, because normally a super fund, you know, if you've got five or ten thousand dollars in there, normal super funds will charge you a one percent fee per year to run it, and that's that's pretty cheap, you know, when you've got five or ten grand in there. Um, the self managed yep. super fund generally costs you around about three thousand dollars a year to run, mm. so you know, it's three thousand dollars like as a fixed fee. And you know, if you've only got ten thousand dollars in there, paying three thousand dollars a year you're going to run out of money very quickly. But if you've got around about $100,000 in there well, yeah. and they take out 3% per year or $3,000 a year, that's okay. As long as you're earning 5% or 10% on your assets, yeah. Yeah. then it's going to be cheap for you. So you can definitely do that. You can have a yeah. chat to your accountant about starting up a self money super fund and you can run it in tandem with, uh, with an employee yep. fund if that's what you have. Uh, that's pretty simple. Now, David, last week you um, you wanted to talk about uh, Hyperfund and Hyperfund, yeah. So, so yeah, I, I couldn't find any coin called Hyperfund. I found Hypercash. Uh, it's like a privacy um, coin. From my understanding, it's like a community where you can you join up, create a community and um, earn extra points on signing people up. Um, you can minimum um, deposit is $300 US. Yeah. Um, I did have some information. I don't know if that's like, I think that's a special rate or something. Yeah. And then you can, then it buys into, um, cryptocurrency and it's backed by it's backed by large very large companies i don't know who they are 
Okay. So I did have a small amount of information. Yeah. So, um, so I just thought that maybe if I throw it out there. Yeah. If, yeah. if you've got a link, I'll look into it. But just from the description, it sounds dodgy. Um, like yep. any, anything that says, you know, we'll give you extra money if you bring your friends in. Generally, that's a pyramid yeah. scheme. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so I'd be very reluctant to, to look at any of those. I actually heard the other day that um, Mway and Herbalife are actually banned in the UK. Um, not I'm saying that those are pyramid schemes, but you do earn money from yeah. having other people join underneath you and the UK government just banned them. Those businesses have been around for 50 years, um, but it's close enough to a pyramid scheme that the UK government said, look, we're not going to operate in our country. And any, anything that says, hey, look, you know, we're going to pay you extra if you're bringing in extra, more people, where are they getting that money from? You know, they're obviously mm. taking the money from the people who join. Um, so it's either a pyramid scheme or they're, or they're selling you something at a massively yeah. inflated price, which is, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll pick on Amway for selling $68 washing powder. Um, they're obviously making a big enough profit on that. They can pay 30% commission to the person who actually introduced it to you. So I'm not saying it's dodgy. I'm not saying it's a pyramid scheme, mm. but it kind of sounds like one just from your description. But if you can send me a link, I'll look into it further. Yeah. I just couldn't find any information on Google. So there, there was someone mentioned also. Yeah, no, just because more recent. Did, did you mention helium last week? Somebody asked about that. There's, there's, two, there's two coins that I wrote down. One was Hyperfund and one, the other one was Helium. Um, and Helium looked like a, a, a pretty decent project, actually. Um, they actually, uh, they pay you for allowing other people to use your data. So, you know, if you haven't got any top secret information on your phone and you're sitting in a public place in McDonald's, um, other people can use your phone as like a mobile hotspot. And they're using your data, and you actually get um, you actually get paid for that, which seemed like a fairly decent thing as long as you don't have top secret information. That if someone can hack into your phone from you sharing your hotspot, so anyway, so yeah, send, send me some information if you've got Hyperfund, and obviously we can have a private chat offline um, more about your super if you want to have yep. a chat about that. So good yep. as gold. Andre, welcome back, mate. Thank you. Good you're, to see you you're here. here again. You must have had a good time last week. Of course. <laughs> so what, what have you learned this week and what do you want to learn? Oh, there is so much to learn. Um, you, was, you mentioned super funds, of course, fantastic topic. Um, crypto, trading, everything is great. Um, what I've learned... Uh, one of the things would be how patience is important when investing, mm -hmm. importance of patience. And also I've heard from a friend of mine that uh, I was given a tip that uh, HOT, cryptocurrency, HOLO, is something to look into. Mm -hmm. That it's uh, basically fundamentally uh, the beginning of uh, 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 World Wide Web 3 is about sharing resources. And yeah. it's uh, much more energy efficient than uh, blockchain technology and uh, particularly Bitcoin. When mining, those requires huge resources and uh, I know sustainable energy, everybody's sort of justifying, but we yeah. can always say that, <laughs> that sustainable energy can be used elsewhere. Uh, so that, so I was reading about it, invested some and uh, yeah, it was interesting. Okay, it's, it's called HOLO, H-O-L-O. -O. H-O-L-O, -O, uh, the crypto name is H-O-T, hot, as in war. Okay, that yeah, sounds interesting. There, there's a few different um, permutations. Could you try again? <laughs> there's a few different permutations of, of blockchains that have come up. Um, mm. And pe pe people who criticize Bitcoin and go, oh my God, Bitcoin uses so much power. You know, like the, the worldwide mm. network of Bitcoin uses more power than the Netherlands. And number one, the Netherlands is a tiny little place. Um, and we're talking a worldwide system, but no one actually compares yes, absolutely. how much electricity does Bitcoin use compared to, say, Bank of America 
or to the Visa network or the MasterCard network or PayPal. You know, so they're not really comparing apples sure. with apples. Um, uh -huh. And the people who are whinging and bitching about Bitcoin saying, oh, it uses so much power, it uses so much resources. Number one, they either hate Bitcoin. Number two, they might have missed out on buying Bitcoin when it was first offered to them five years ago, you know, for like $100. So they're, they're probably dirty at Bitcoin. But if, if they're saying, oh, it's a waste of resources, well, have a look at what, what we're really comparing Bitcoin to. It is a mm. worldwide financial system. And I, I haven't done the measurements. I don't know how much, how much power MasterCard uses. But if you're going to compare apples with apples, that's what I'd be looking at. Having said that, there are faster things. Because you know yourself from transferring Bitcoin, it can take sometimes 30 to 60 minutes for the transactions to go through. Now that it is literally around the world, 24 hours a day. Um, so some of the other blockchains are like the, the what they call the DAG, Decentralized Ace a cyclical graph or something like that, uh, which is basically instead of a chain that goes one to one to one, left, left to right, it actually spreads out in all directions. Um, and so I believe Myota is one of those coins or IOTA. And so oh, rather, than, rather than paying a fee to a miner to send your blockchain to the next block to the next block, when you pop up your phone and you say, look, I want to send David 10 IOTAs, on your, on your phone or on your computer, you have to process two other transactions. And you process two transactions and then yours moves to the front. And then someone else processes your transaction and my transaction and then this moves to the front. So the more people get on the network, the faster it goes. And it can literally expand out like that using very, very little power. Um, some of them can even operate without the internet because it's like sending a text message to, to someone else's phone as long as there's someone else's phone within reach of the, the tower. Um, and even, even in places like if the tower goes down, what do we do? Well, you know, you can, you can send a text message to another person or you can use Bluetooth on your phone as long as someone's you know, standing 100 metres away from you. Mm. So they're, they're looking at ways to make these systems much faster, much more efficient and using less power, particularly in the third world countries where, you know, power might be of the essence. Um, and sometimes cell, cell phone towers are down. Like when I was in Zimbabwe, sometimes the, the cell phone towers would go down for a couple of days and just go, shit, I've got no phone, you know, um, or got no power for a couple of days on, on other times. Um, and what, what can you actually do in those situations? Um, I, was, I was listening to Clubhouse and there's some Bitcoin developers on Clubhouse this week and they were talking about um, when the internet goes down, it you know, hadn't happened in a first world country, but in third world countries like in, in Hong Kong when there was riots, um, in Egypt when there was riots, the government actually shut down the internet to the entire country. And these guys were working out a way they could send Bitcoin over shortwave radio or CB radio. So like, wow, that's mm. really cool. Yeah. Just in case, we, we still want this financial system to be running even if the government shuts it down or even if you know, a nuclear bomb blows up the internet tomorrow. So, yeah, some, some very interesting technology coming out. So I'll, I'll have a look at Hollow, um, but it, sound, it sounds fun. It sounds good. I think it's exactly one of those you mentioned that it doesn't require the blockchain or approval or, or approval of the transaction from so many sides. Mm. As in uh, blockchain, it has to be approved in... Um, in many points, while here yeah. is a pool between the receiver and sender. Yeah. It's a... Yeah, very good. I mean, that's, that's one of the things that people say about, about Bitcoin itself. Um, you know, like if, I, if I'm transferring Bitcoin to you, it might take 30 to 60 minutes to get to you. And that's okay, yeah. because it's still faster than the olden days when I'd transfer money to you from my bank account, it would take three days to get to you. But if you're going to pay for a pizza, you want to be able to transfer your Bitcoin from your wallet to the other person's wallet, you know, in a before few seconds. Before it gets cold, huh? <laughs> <Before you begin laughs> That's gets it. Cold. <laughs> so, yeah, and there's, there's faster networks being built and that's, and that's mm. great. And there's obviously a lot of developers working on Bitcoin, uh, including the, the Lightning Network and a few other things to try and make that faster and have little side mm. chains that operate um, very, very quickly and then are added to this straight blockchain later on. So, yeah, it's, mm. it's a technology that's evolving all the time, which is really interesting. 
Super. Very cool. Shondell, welcome. Hello, hello. Thank you. Hello, sorry, I was on mute. My apology. <laughs> hello. Good to see your um, pretty face. <laughs> nice to see you also. Um, I'm just happy just to listen. Is that okay? Because I'm not quite familiar. Yeah, well, what, what we're just sharing at the moment is anything that you've learned already that some other people may benefit from and anything that you might want to learn. Wow. Um, I'm just, yeah, I just, I didn't really, yeah, I need to talk to you more about the, the I didn't realise that Boston Coin, you, you were Boston Coin. I didn't, is that, is that right? Boston trading? Yeah. You, you are. Uh, I, I do some things with Boston. I Coin. went and used Ugly. What's you that? should have told me. I would have gone. I, and then I went to Ainsley by mistake. Oh, Ainsley, Ainsley sells Bitcoin. I wish I'd just gone. As well as gold and silver. Um, mm. I, don't, I don't think that Ainsley actually sells other coins, like what they call the alt coins. You know, there's Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then there's everything else. Um, mm. And Boston Coin is, well, Boston Coin is not an alt coin. Um, it's actually like a, a managed fund, which includes, you know, 20 or 30 different other coins inside of it. So it's, oh, okay. it's a different beastie entirely. Um, okay. The, the, the idea is, you know, same, same as when you go to the bank and get a managed fund or, you know, your superannuation gets a managed fund is by diversifying, you've got less risk. And yeah. so last year, you know, the pandemic hit, Bitcoin went down by 60%. Um, mm. Boston coin actually went up by 50%. Because we okay. weren't, weren't solely invested in, in Bitcoin. We had other coins and we also had technology stocks. And of course, when everyone started working from home, the technology stocks lifted up as well. So mm. the, the idea is just diversifying your eggs into different baskets. So yeah. there's, there's some people out there who have got like, oh, I want to put $100,000 in cryptocurrency. Like, Good for you. you know, if you want to put $100,000 in cryptocurrency, you can build your own portfolio and allocate, you know, 10% here and 5% there and 3% somewhere else. But if you've only got a few grand or if you don't have the time to, to run your own portfolio, that's where you yes. get a managed fund and say, look, I'll just give the money to someone else. Someone else can look after it. Easy peasy. Okay. Mm. So the, the, the point is, Shondell, we're all beginners at something. Mm. You know, yeah. like you, you can look at Dave and see he looks like a really intelligent guy who obviously, you know, sits at home and programs the blockchain and, you know, dismantles Bitcoin just for, you know, pulling apart a toaster. Um, but we're all experts on different things. And okay. I, was, I, was, I shared with Leo today, you know, he's an expert because he's had about three weeks experience. And literally we're, we're at like less than 2% penetration with cryptocurrency, like 2% of the world. So it's kind of like, you know, in 1996, I was one of the first people to have internet um, because it was the year that my sister moved to America and I wanted to keep in contact with my sister. So I got the internet so I could talk to my sister. And most people didn't have the internet. They'd kind of heard of it. And my friends and family are saying to me, oh, you don't want to be on the internet. You know, people will steal your credit card and there's, there's pornography on there and, you know, there's, there's thieves and gamblers and, and pedophiles and all sorts of scary things on the internet. And I was like, well, I'm on the internet and I'm not a scary thief or a pedophile, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but thanks for telling me about the pornography. That'll keep you busy for a week and a half. Um, but I was just mm -hmm. going there to chat to my sister, you know. Mm -hmm. And over time, over the next few, few years, you know, the library started to get the internet and these schools started to get the internet and businesses started to get the internet. And, you know, it, it took about seven years to go from like 2% of the population to almost 80% of the population. And that's what we're seeing here with, with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is we're just on the, on the mm. cutting edge. There's only one or 2% of the world that actually has, has it and uses it, but it's going the way. And particularly with, with what happened in the last couple of weeks, it's going the way that it will be 80% adoption. 
you know, when you've got Elon Musk putting money into, into Bitcoin and saying, hey, if you want to buy a Tesla car, you can pay in Bitcoin. And we've got mm-hmm. PayPal saying you can buy Bitcoin on, on PayPal. And we've got MasterCard mm-hmm. signing deals with, with Bitcoin. Um, and there's, there's Visa cards that you can use. And you've, you've seen my Visa card that, that operates on cryptocurrency. So mm-hmm. there's some big, big money coming into the space. And whoops, the, the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, or St. Louis, I don't know, whatever, Federal Reserve Bank in America um, has just announced that they will yep. be actually looking after cryptocurrency for their clients. So yeah. it's starting to happen. The mass adoption is starting to happen. And at the moment, you know more about it than most of your friends do. So you're the expert. You mentioned the other day about um, like the cash. What would you recommend, you know, like if you had some spare cash that you didn't necessarily want to put it in the bank, that you didn't want to just hide it under your mattress, you know, like your grandma, you know, what would you recommend that I could do or anyone could do? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is, this is sort of going back to a financial planning question. Um, oh. And that's, that's fine. So the, the rule of thumb is like if you've got some cash, if you want to use that cash in five to seven years' time, that's where you would say, okay, I can buy property with that or I can buy shares with that. Right? You don't mm. put the cash that you're going to need next Tuesday to pay the GST, you don't put that into all wet shares. Because they're volatile, right? They'll go up and down through the week. So if you're going to need the cash within 12 months, then you can put it into the stable coins. And the stable coins are not volatile at all. They're just one-to-one and valued in the US dollar or the Aussie dollar or you know, the British pound or whatever. So you know, right now, for $10,000, you will get 12% of a Bitcoin. Right. Whereas a year ago, for ten thousand dollars, you got one bitcoin. That's an example of volatility. The price is changing all the time. So, but right now, you can put ten thousand dollars into the Australian dollar digital coin, and you'll get ten thousand dollars worth of Australian digital coins. And in six months' time, twelve months' time, it'll still be ten grand. It's stable. Right. Every day, it's worth a dollar. The difference is because it's a digital coin. You can put it into the digital bank and you can get interest of like 6%, 10%, 12% on that. And how do I go about doing stuff like that? Uh, well, you'll, you'll need to buy the coin on an exchange. Um, okay. So you either you can do that yourself or you can have someone help you. Um, and de- depending on the exchange that you use, sometimes you can throw the cash directly in there. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm not going to sort of mention one, one exchange over another, but if you go to the Krillionaire.com blog, uh, mm-hmm. you'll see a whole bunch of exchanges. There's CoinSpot and CoinJar and Binance and blah, 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 blah. And there's even a few links in there where if you click the link, you get $25. Um, not that it's much, but you know, it'll buy you a is that the app that you Is that the app that you sent me? Um, no, it's a w- website address. Where, where you can actually download the apps. Yeah, so you've you probably got one of the apps already. Yes. Uh, Krillionaire.com. Krill, Krill, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you, you can get the, you know, buy, say, just for example, 10,000 Australian dollars, whack it into one of the, the DeFi digital banks. Um, yeah. We like Celsius. You can also use blockchain. You can use crypto.com and a few others. Um, and you can get like 10% interest on that. So, which is kind of nice. And, you know, pe- even people who are, are buying the volatile coins like Bitcoin and Ethereum and things like that, you can also whack them into like a term deposit. So you can whack your, even though Bitcoin's going up and down, you can put it in mm. on a, like a 90-day term deposit or a 30-day term deposit. And I think you earn about 4.5% up to 6% on those. Obviously, you're earning more on the stable coins because the stable coins don't fluctuate. So it's easy for the, for the bank to, to pay interest on them. But the ones that do fluctuate, um, you get a lesser interest rate, but it's better than nothing. You know, the last 12 months if you were holding Bitcoin, you kind of had eight months where you were sad and four months where you were happy. But in that entire eight months while Bitcoin was going down, 
you could have been mm. earning interest on that Bitcoin just while it's sitting there. So I think Muliani, oh, yeah. yeah, Muliani has just put the link in there. So if you, if you click on the yeah, chat, you can see that. Thanks. That's handy. Um, does there have to be a min minimum for that? Is there a minimum, you know, like you just mentioned $10,000. Is yeah, there a yeah. minimum, like do you have to do 10000 or can it be 200 Yeah, it can be 200 literally. And, and that, that's a good way to start. I mean, you know, if, mm. if it's your first time in crypto, one of your friends yeah. is like, what do I do? You know, usually people get into Bitcoin first. That's usually the, you know, the virgin breaker. Um, and then they start getting interested in other, in other cryptocurrencies. So they, they might buy $200 worth of Bitcoin and go, what do I do with it? Like, we'll just stick it in a little term deposit and leave it there. Yeah. And even if the price of Bitcoin is going down, they can be earning more Bitcoin. So let, let's say you buy $200 worth of Bitcoin, leave it there for 12 months. At the end of 12 months, you've got $208 worth of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. You go, big whoop, you know, but it's better than nothing. And they're actually paying you interest in Bitcoin rather than paying you interest in cash. Because yeah. as, as we know, cash is going downhill. The figures I checked today, um, the US dollar has gone down 12% against mm. other currencies in the world since the pandemic started. So the US dollar is losing value because they're just printing more and more and more US dollars. Mm. Uh, mm. Long answer to a short question. Thank you. Most welcome. Most welcome. As I say, guys, there's, there's some questions that we don't want to you know, ask in front of everybody um, because, Shondell, if, if Andre finds out how super rich you are, he might come around to your house and either try to rob you or try to marry you or both. Um, but <laughs> you, can, you can send me an email on those questions or we have a chat quietly off, offline later on. So... Leo, you just disappeared. We're about to call on you. He's... I'm back. You're back? You're good? Yeah, I was just checking out this page. Uh, got, got little buttons down the bottom. Uh, yep. Just flick the page. Cool. So you've gone to the Krillionaire page and now you know everything. <laughs> which, which exchanges are the best and where to get the best rate of interest on storing yeah. crypto? Yeah, i just got to get that wallet open. Yep. Excellent, excellent. You might you might end up with half a dozen wallets, mate. I, I think yeah. I've got about twelve wallets on my phone, um, and two banking apps. So <laughs> there was a time when I only had two banking apps and, and only one wallet, and then gradually they've just they've just taken over. I had a question for you. I don't know that it interests everybody else, but the yeah. ID wallet and the Boston coin. There's still a buy button for uh, in Boston. the I do wallet. Can yeah. you buy boss for the I do wallet? Uh, you can try. You can try. Uh, we we currently don't have an arrangement with them, um, but if enough people start clicking on it, then then I'm sure they'll actually come and sign an arrangement with us. This, this reminds me of, of 20 years ago when I wrote my book, and you know, no one had ever heard of me. And they wouldn't stock my book in the, in the major bookstores. And so I used to sneak into the bookstores and I'd put five or six of my books on the shelf and then walk out. It was the opposite of shoplifting. I was, I was putting the books in there. And like I did in Kmart and in, in Woolies and, you know, a whole, a whole bunch of bookstores, Mary Ryan and all this sort of stuff. Any bookstore that was within three hours drive of my house, I would put my books on their bookshelf. And I must have given away more than a thousand of these books and people would walk up to the counter and go, I want to buy this book. And they'd scan it and go, oh, it doesn't scan, but we obviously sell it. So we better get some more in because we've just sold the last two. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, even, I even went on radio. I told, I told people on radio, like, if you want to get my book, rush out and get it. It's at Mary Ryan Bookshops. But it was only in the Mary Ryan Bookshops that were in three-hour drive of my house. So people in Melbourne and Sydney started ringing up Mary Ryan and saying, I want Jeremy's book. And so they had to actually come to me then and ask, oh, you know, can we please stock your book? So, All right. Right. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little guerrilla marketing tactic for the day. So <laughs> right. we, it, it's just gone 7.30. Is there any more questions that we want to ask in public? 
David, are you putting your hand up to ask a question or are you waving goodbye? We can't hear you, mate. You're on mute. Sorry. Yep. Um, is there any preferable um, wallets in terms of, um, I imagine uh, uh, we need to obviously, um, the first step is purchase of a wallet. Well, you, your, wallet, your wallet is free. I've, I've never found a wallet you'd have to pay for. Um, okay. And it, it depends. Like my, my first ever wallet was a Bitcoin wallet and it only could store Bitcoin because Bitcoin was pretty well the only cryptocurrency back then. Um, and you know, then you can get an Ethereum wallet, but you don't just get Ethereum to store in there because there's a lot of Ethereum tokens. You know, there's literally thousands of them. Boston coin is, is a token built on the Ethereum network. So you can have like one wallet that only has Bitcoin in it. You have another wallet that's got like 50, 60 coins in it, which are all Ethereum coins. And there is some, some wallets like the Coinbase and, and these other ones, which will actually allow like the top 50 coins. And then if you want to go and buy some obscure coin that no one's ever heard of, you'll need to download a different wallet for that, which is why I ended up having 12 wallets on my phone because I bought a lot of obscure coins that no one's ever heard of. Um, mm. I don't think there's a, there's a one-size-fits-all solution because we're talking yeah. about different blockchains, as Andre was saying before. Um, you know, some of them run on Ethereum, some, some of them run on the, the Bitcoin network, like Bitcoin Cash runs on the Bitcoin network. Um, some of them are, are DAG, the decentralized, acyclical, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then there's other ones that don't even have a blockchain, like Coin um, with a Q. So... You know, you're going to end up with a whole bunch of different wallets and that's okay. You know, that's okay. Mm. It's like if, if you're a world traveler, you've probably got, you know, five or six different banknotes in your wallet and that's okay. Um, I mean, there's, there's ones after a while you can trim it down. If you get a new wallet and you find out this one can hold the top 80 coins, you might find that I can put 90% of my stuff in there and, and bonus points if it's one that actually pays interest. So that's why I like the, um, the one from crypto.com, uh, the CRO, CRO one that you'll see on, on the Crillionaire blog. And there's a link there where you can actually get a, a crypto credit card. And every time you go and buy groceries and petrol and things like that, you get 3% cash back payable in crypto. It's like, you know, the people who don't want to buy Bitcoin, how about free Bitcoin? Every time you go shopping, you get free Bitcoin. That's kind of cool. You know, mm. and over over the last six months, I think I've I've you know built up about a thousand dollars or more just in going and buying petrol and, and food and things like that. So that's a bit of fun. But there, yeah, there's lots there's lots and lots of wallets. I I don't have a, a perfect solution, uh, and there's no one perfect blockchain. But um, if you can get away with having three or four wallets, I think you're doing better than me. So, Can I have a quick question related to, to this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, just a quick one. So we are talking about software wallets. Mm -hmm. And is it ideal to transfer all the portfolio to hardware wallets, the one we don't want to trade? Um, you can do that, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a, a very secure way of doing things. Um, the, the important part of, you know, don't, don't look at Leo, but the important part of writing down your seed phrase um, having those, I, I laminate them and put them in a safe because, you know, if there's a fire in your house, nine times out of 10, your documents are going to be ruined by water, not by the fire itself. So if that piece of paper gets wet, um, and also obviously there's, there's little USB sticks and things that you can have like your ledger and your trezor, um, yeah. which are good, but again, not perfect. So if those things go through the washing machine or... You know, if they get too hot from sitting in your pocket next to your phone or if there's a fire in the house, then, you know, those things are, are gone. So I, I would have multiple, multiple systems. Um, yeah. and, and really, you know, you can't beat a piece of paper. At the end of the day, you can't beat a piece of paper because mm. it doesn't need batteries. It doesn't get hot. It doesn't, it doesn't get damaged. As long as you laminate it and stick it in the safe or have three copies of it and you know, mail yeah. one to yeah. grandma who doesn't even know what a Bitcoin is, so she's not going to steal your money. Um, or some, some people I know have got their 12 words 
and give four words to a cousin and four words to their dad and four words to their sister. And that way they ever lose their phone or their, their computer or whatever, they can still restore their wallet. But the person who has the words can't take all their money because you'd need to have those three people all together in the one room. So, yeah. Yeah, I bought a Trezor, but I haven't transferred my uh, uh, money there, my oh, coins to the Trezor. And with the seed phrase, uh, I've got a little invention that I invented. I'll share with you guys that uh, I wrote the poem consisting of the seed words. Nice. That every, I just make up, seventh yeah. word is the seed, yeah. seed word. Yeah. So it's a, a poem for a page. I've got a digital copy because no one knows yeah, which yeah, one no one is, is. there. Very so, clever. Uh, I can have a digital copy anywhere, yeah. anytime, multiple printed copies. Yeah. I'm just sort of still working out the way to transfer the thing there and stuff like that. So Everybody make sure they enjoy. buy Andre's poetry book when it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the, there you are. but I still smuggle a few copies to a Kmart and bookstores. <laughs> Absolutely. So have, have a few backups, have a few different systems. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I won't tell you where I keep all of mine, but um, I've, I've got multiple yeah. copies and it's mm. always a good idea. But it's, does it offer less flexibility? So if I want to do a trade, then I'll, I'm still stuck between and transfers transfer and stuff. from like the Trezor onto yeah. the exchange and then, and yeah. then trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if, if it's a really quick trade that you need to do in and out, um, then you might not want to wait an hour. Some of the exchanges, like exchanges are, are going to be, someone's going to try and hack the exchange because there's literally billions and billions of dollars on the exchange. It's like you, you don't rob a person, you rob a bank, right? Yeah. Um, but some of the exchanges are insured. So if they do get hacked, you'll still get your money back. Okay. And, and some of them you know, will actually, as I say, they'll pay you interest while it's sitting there. So for me, it's, it's worth the risk to oh. have it sitting on one of those ones where it's paying interest because I'm making an extra four or 10% and they'll cover me in case right. anything goes wrong. So, um, guys, got, got to wind up. Uh, we will be back again next week. And if there's any questions in the meantime, please shoot me an email. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, guys. It was great. Thanks, See you next time. Bye. Jeremy.